Good morning, everyone. It is a real honor for me to be here speaking. I've come many times and sat in the seats that you're sitting in and uh, really never imagined that I'd be up here. So this is really cool for me. So we're about to embark on a journey as lost as a gateway to creativity. It's not something that we often think about when we think of lost, that it's actually a gateway to creativity. It's a journey that never ends. And it's a journey that begins from the time that we're actually quite young. We all have different experiences of lost. And lost for me, when I was approached to speak about it, because my background is in communications, it's all about the words. Right? And so I often look up the definition of words of things. So I looked up lost. And when I saw the definition, it was unable to find the way, non-visible, denoting something that has been taken away, ruined, or deserted. And for me, lost actually is just more about the words. Words are matter in the realm of sound, and they carry vibration. And for me, lost actually elicits a very primal reaction in the body when you think about lost. Lost can sometimes be considered things like when you're lost in the forest, right? You're going for a walk. You hear about people getting lost in the woods all the time. No way out. And what do we do? We can get lost in a maze. I love doing mazes. And I often find myself lost, running around in circles, right? not knowing what to do, sometimes waiting for somebody else to come to show me the way out. Right? And then what does that create for us in our bodies when we think about being lost? Very few times do we have the opportunity when we're lost to actually see the landscape, to know where we're going, to see where the openings are. Oftentimes, we don't get this, because when we're in it, it's like looking at the hedges right, of that maze, or seeing all those trees in the forest, and everything looks exactly the same. Because I don't believe in actually speaking, I believe in public conversations. And I love having experiential conversations. What we're going to do today is we're going to be looking at lost as terms, in terms of how it actually feels in your body. And the journey that we're going to be taking is to, I want to invite you to consider shifting how lost feels in your body at this moment to looking at lost as a possibility to be creative and innovative. And so in a moment, what I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm gonna guide you through taking a few breaths, and I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. Not right now, just in a few minutes. And while you're closing your eyes, I'm gonna walk you through a landscape and you might hear some sounds. And I just want you to pay attention and notice what's going on in your body. What are some of the thoughts that are coming up inside your head? Okay, so first we're gonna take a few breaths. So I want you to take a nice big inhale and exhale. And another inhale and exhale. And now I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to just continue doing that breathing, the inhaling and the exhaling as you think about loss, I want you to think about an experience of loss that you may have had either emotionally or physically. What do you notice? What's coming up? What are some of the words that you're experiencing? Listen to the drum. Can you feel the vibration of the word loss? Take one or two more breaths. 
And now what I want you to do is when you open your eyes, I want you to keep your attention to the front, looking at the screen. Take one more breath and open your eyes. And you see the screen. You don't see me. You hear my voice. You know I'm somewhere in the room, but where am I? What's this experience like? Do you want to find me? Do you want to know where I am? Do you really want to turn your head and say, where could she have gone? Right? What are the words? What are the sensations? Is it uncomfortable? Is it comfortable? Are you feeling hot? Are you feeling cold? Is there a tingling? And here I am. So what were some of the things that came up for you as you considered lost? You can just throw out words or sensations that you felt in your body. Fear. Fear. Anxiety. Anxiety. Panic. Panic. Frustration. Frustration. Empty. Empty. Body pains? Untethered. Untethered. Right. Planning. Sorry? Planning. Planning. Right. Right. We have all these different sensations and we all experience the same experience, right? And look at all the different words and sensations. Anybody can Tell me sensations that they felt. Was there a tightness in your body? Did you feel hot? Did you feel cold? Was there tingling, muscle spasms? Anything like that? Your chest? Beating in your chest? Tightness, Tightness in your chest. Nice. Here was free. Free. Free? He was feeling free? Nice. Anything else? Sweat. Sweat. Right. Okay. Lost elicits all these things in our body. We can feel like we don't know what direction we're going. We can feel abandoned. Right? Like in the video of a child being lost in a mall and feeling abandoned. We can feel that we can't find our way. We don't know the next step. And sometimes when we're in that sense of our experience of lost, we feel like we're looking for a needle in a haystack. Right? We're looking. We're looking to move out of the experience of lost. So the invitation today is for us to shift the story. And how are we going to do that? Well, in order to shift the story, first we have to know our story. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story of being lost. So my story started when I was four years old. And I came from Trinidad. Yes, my parents took me from my very hot country and brought me here. I still have not forgiven them for that. <laughs> so I came and my grandmother came with me because I came, I stayed with my, my grandmother while my parents came and migrated here for a year. And I came to Canada and I had never seen, you know, white people before. And so I would say, I don't like those brown people. I didn't know any better. And I thought I was going back to Trinidad with my grandmother. So she stayed for six months. You know, I was in school doing all that stuff. And the day she was leaving, I got up, I packed my bags. Apparently I was sitting at the table singing, I'm leaving on a jet plane, <laughs> only to find out I wasn't going. Well, as a four-year-old, the intelligent response was shut down. I was lost. My world was crumbling. 
I knew about climbing trees and running around. I was one of those wild childs. No ribbons in the hair, no socks, no shoes, always in a disarray. I know, I've cleaned up quite nicely today. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> right? So as a child, my reaction to that lost sensation was to disappear. And when I came back, I came back as the perfect little girl. I did everything just right. Nobody knew what was going on behind the curtain. Fast forward, and now I'm in school and I've graduated and I don't have a clue what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. I have a degree in political science because I had some notion that I was going to run some country somewhere. <laughs> now what do I do? Right? Lost to what my future is going to hold for me. Eventually, I got into public relations. And it was really just a lark. I was working at VA Montreal Children's Hospital, and someone said, what about public relations? I thought, what the hell's that? So I went down, I volunteered, and I loved it, because I'm a naturally nosy person. <laughs> right? I worked at the Montreal Children's Hospital as a nurse's aide to put myself through school, and I knew everything that was going on in that hospital. I used to have Lisa's rounds. I'd start at the top and work my way down. I knew everything. And then I got into PR and I got to find out everything that was going on behind the scenes. That was great. So I went back, got my certificate in public relations management. I'm set, right? Great. Second experience of loss, but yet I was found. Fast forward, you know, you do the thing, you get married. You buy a house, you think about having kids, right? Do everything right. My ex-husband at the time, or my husband at the time, we thought, okay, it's time for kids. Wasn't happening. So we went the in vitro way. Two rounds. I can't tell you the crazy that happened to me during that process. I was so lost lost to the notion of, I might not be a mother. Lost to, how is this going to impact my marriage? And here's the thing, no one knew what I was going through because I put on a happy face, right? It would take me, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half to prepare, to go out with my friends and make everything look really nice and good, and then I'd get home and I'd lose it. One day I went and got my hair done, and the hairdresser didn't do exactly what I really wanted. And when my husband picked me up, I was a crazy woman in the car. Lost to that. So we, what we do, we become warrior. Buckle up. Put on your big girl panties, keep going. The next, let's adopt. Right, how hard can that be? Well. <laughs> You know, I think everyone who wants to have a child should have to go through that process. There is not a rock that they do not overturn. And everything was going really well. We were picked. Birth mother looked really good. The baby was born. We went to the hospital. We named her. She never opened her eyes. And I left going, hmm. A couple of days went by. The day we were supposed to get her from the hospital, the birth mother changed her mind. Because it's her right to do that. Lost. Devastated. And it wasn't just being lost for myself. Their community, my friends, it was all an experience of loss. Lost and loss work hand in hand with one another. And we interchange them. That was a huge loss. Luckily for me at that time, I had actually done some self-development and I was starting to evolve. And so for the first time, I didn't take on warrior. I didn't say, okay, put your big girl panties on and let's get on with this. I actually let myself be in the experience. Was it easy? No. Was it fun? No. 
Did it invite me to discover something that I didn't know, I didn't know about myself? Absolutely. So how do we shift from being in, when we're in that experience of lost? Well, it begins with the breath. Let's take a breath. What type of breath do you take? You know, we all have a go-to breath. And usually it's the earth breath. It's the breath where you inhale and you exhale and you hold on the exhale. So it's like, because it grounds us. Well, here's the thing. It's a great breath, but it actually also grounds us in the experience of lost. So it's like building layers of concrete on it, making it a little bit more difficult for us to climb our way out. So I want you to consider an air breath, which is where you inhale and you hold on the inhale and then exhale. So let's take a moment and inhale and hold. One, two, three, and exhale. And inhale and hold. And exhale. Here's the thing about when we are in experiences of loss. You cannot have the same thought when you change your breath. So to notice what is your go-to breath? What is that breath that I'm always in? And consciously, mindfully change it up. Take a water breath, which is just a regular flow of breathing with no stopping on the inhale or exhaling. Take an air breath. Shift the belief that you have around what loss could possibly be. These are all really small things that we can do to help shift us out. But here's the thing about when we're lost. We don't want to be there. We want to get to the next place now. Do you notice though when you're experiencing something happy, like when you're happy or excited or having a good time, you don't want to rush to get to the next thing? So why is it with lost, we want to rush? It's because we're taught. It's part of our cultural conditioning, right? Just like the slides earlier around being lost in a mall. You go out with your parents and you're young and they, you know, at the time when I was growing up, they had harnesses and stuff, right? Because they didn't want you to get lost, <laughs> right? You find yourself, right? So it's ingrained in us not to be lost. There are cultures around the world where they actually encourage loss, where their children as a term of, as a way of maturing, they send them out into the wilderness for them to find themselves. The invitation that lost provides for us is an invitation to be found, not to actually go out and find something. Our creativity and our innovation is actually embedded in the experience of being lost. It is an invitation for creativity and innovation. Have you ever, ever had writer's block? Or for those of you who are artists and you, you know, you're looking at it, staring at a blank canvas, what do we do? Right? I often will go out into, the, into nature. I'll go for a walk, I'll go for a bike ride. In the winter, I might snowball the driveway. I love snowball in the driveway. <laughs> What can we do in order to invite ourselves to be where we are? So the shift. We go from an experience of somewhere where we don't want to be to potentially inviting ourselves to be on, wait for the path to present itself. Lost is an invitation for the path to present itself. We're unable to find our way. The invitation that loss creates there is, what do I actually see? What am I actually experiencing? What are some of the choices that I'm making in my life? Denoting something that has been taken. This is the invitation to find something that I didn't know I didn't know about myself. 
How many of you have had those experiences where it's in the mud and you can't see two feet in front of you and you don't know where you're going and then all of a sudden one day, ah, the heavens open up and an idea comes and you go with it. Anybody have that experience? Right. And that experience, I'm going to guess, happens when you actually let go into the not knowing. We are so conditioned to go look for things. And it's hard, because we work in organizations and places where there is a demand to know the answers. Lost also presents for us in our everyday language in the I don't know. But guess what? We're culturally conditioned to think that I don't know is not a valid response. It is. Yes, no, and I don't know is a valid response. Why? Because I don't know creates the space for me to discover what it is I need to discover for myself. Do I actually want to say yes or do I want to say no? As opposed to saying yes and going, oh, I really wanted to say no, but we've made plans now, right? It gives us space. Oops, wrong way. So the invitation for us to experience loss differently is about the vibration that it holds in our body. Words are matter in the realm of sound. And often we say, what you think is how your life unfolds. But what no one tells us is, it's the vibration that the word holds inside of you. I want you to think of the word anxiety, right? That elicits all kinds of stuff. What are some of the body responses that happens with anxiety? Shaking. Shaking, yes. Palpitations. Palpitations, tension. Cold hands and feet, right? All things that we associate with the word anxiety. Now I want you to take a nice big breath, inhale. Exhale. I want you now to think of an experience where you were super, super, super excited about something. Have you got it? What's the sensations in your body? Shaking. Tingling. Tingling. <laughs> Happy. Right? It's very similar. In one context, we label it as bad, and it's anxiety. In another context, it's label as good and it's excitement. What if we were to consider when I had that sensation rising in my body, rather than labeling it as anxiety, I think of it as, oh, there's potential here. I might be excited to discover or experience something new. Doesn't that shift the landscape of it? And so what we're going to do as we come to another bend in our journey is I want you to consider and invite yourself into the possibility of lost being the gateway for innovation and creativity and to shift the vibration of the word in your body and sometimes shifting the vibration means we need to shift the word we need to change the word to something else so that it means something different when I uh, divorced and uh, you know, spent some time on my own to find myself again and started getting into relationships, I had to take the word relationship off the table because it was tethered to so many things in my body in terms of how I reacted. Unfortunately for the person that I was dating at the time, he was like, so how do we tell people what, what, what is this? <laughs> so we'd go to a party and somebody would say, oh, so are you two in a relationship? You're seeing each other? And he'd just go, And I would be, the word that I came up with was co-creation. We're co-creating. <laughs> We're in a co-creative process. <laughs> and I often have people with the deer in the headlights going, what? <laughs> because we love to label things. Like, what does it matter what we call it? But I knew for me, it was really important to change the meaning of the word, the vibration that the word held in my body. 
So I used co-creating for about two years. And then everybody just got used to it. <laughs> right? It became the new thing. Oh, I'm co-creating! <laughs> I want to see how long it's, that's going to go before it goes viral. Right. But what happened was, now I can use the word relationship because it carries a different vibration in my body. I was willing to explore a different word to the sensation. It's just sensations. It's just information. That's all it is. Nothing more, nothing less. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes again and I want you to think of the word lost and maybe think of another word and I want you to consider what's a new word or new vibration. God. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> that definitely changed the vibration <laughs> in the body. <laughs> so what I want to leave you with as you go out into your day and you go out back into your world and into your life is the question, am I willing to consider lost as a gateway to possibility for creativity and innovation. Thank you.